What's happening, MJ traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. Today is Wednesday, April 6. Hope you were well today. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing Tilray's Q3 2022 earnings that came out pre-market this morning. They had a huge, huge beat on the EPS, but uh, they missed their revenue estimates. But because we pulled back leading into earnings, I think that's why we saw a huge, huge move this morning, but we faded it all back because the S&P 500 and crypto started weekly consolidation and we had the, those headwinds versus tailwinds in the broader market. I uh, alluded that uh, to that in my videos from yesterday. But before we get to it, make sure to smash the like, subscribe to the channel, take the bell and you'll be notified on any future updates. Got a lot to go over today, so we're going to go through this as quickly as possible. First, I'll look at the, the earnings here and I'll give my thoughts and opinions and just go through some key highlights. But the EPS forecast, real quick here, uh, it was estimated at negative 0.8. 1028 and it came at a zero one point one one nine so positive zero point one 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 nine and that was forecasted by bnn if you remember i've been covering on this channel for a while now that bnn bloomberg forecasted last year that tilray and hexo would be the first among the tier one lps to profitability at some point in 2022. here we are lo and behold we have positive adjusted ebitda uh, so BNN was correct, and now we have a financial partnership between Hexo and Tilray, and they even mentioned Hexo three times in that uh, earnings report, and probably again on the call. I didn't get to make the call. Unfortunately, I had some uh, coaching sessions and, um, and appointments this morning, uh, so I didn't get to join that. But if anybody did join the call, maybe let me know. Uh, usually, they just regurgitate a lot of the same things that they say in the, uh, in the, the actual earnings report, but... The usually the, the good part is the questions from analysts at the end. So if anybody uh, could, can relay any of those questions or anything notable that came out of that, that'd be great. I haven't got a chance to, uh, to listen to the recording yet, but I'm sure that'll be out uh, before too long. There should be a transcript as well. Uh, but huge beat on EPS. Revenue came in at one, 188.9 million versus the estimated 202.55 million. Of course, this is in Canadian dollars. And again, uh, because we had that pullback in the stock leading into earnings and weekly consolidation, I think that's why we, we had such a huge reaction this morning is because of the EPS. So if you're wondering why we were up so much, in my opinion, it's because of EPS and international sales, which we'll look at here in just a second. And because that was such a huge beat, it offset this, this miss, right? This small miss. Uh, so the fact that we had a huge bit, uh, beat and a small miss means we had a, a pretty good beat, right? Uh, and that's why we saw that that huge move up in the morning, but we ended up pulling back because the S&P 500 was pulling back and uh, with regards to rate hikes and things like that, which we'll uh, look in uh, look into here in a moment. But Tilray Q3 revenue declined 6% sequentially to 55 million. Of course, they're talking about their MJ revenue. So Tilray Brands reports uh, sec uh, third quarter Fiscal year 2022 financial results, they had a profitable quarter, includes net income of 52.5 million and adjusted EBITDA of 10.1 million and 12th consecutive quarter of positive adjusted EBITDA. So that's great to see. Net revenue increased 23% to 152 million. Gross profit increased 31% to 39.8 million from the prior uh, year quarter. Medical market share leader in Europe and number one leader ship position in Germany with revenue growth of over 4,000%. Uh, we'll look at that here in a moment. Maintain number one leading market share in Canada, achieve 76 million in cost synergies to date and on track to exceed original plan of 80 million ahead of schedule to generate additional 20 million in synergies in fiscal 2023. So go on here, a leading yada, yada, yada. Everything mentioned in this report is in US dollars unless otherwise stated. And Erwin D. Simon, the chairman and CEO stated, our third quarter res results reflect progress and momentum across all of our key business segments and the geography, setting the stage for the, to achieve our target of 4 billion in revenue by the end of fiscal 2024. Tilray Medical, which now operates under the cohesive strategy and mission, has a nearly 20% share in Germany, providing clear benefits in its own right and well, uh, as well as a first mover advantage that we will leverage as Germany and the EU move towards broader adult use and medical use legalization. <laughs> They're seeing 4,000% growth uh, in the international segment and it's not even federally, uh, it's not even recreational uh, sales yet available in, uh, in Germany. So lots and lots of growth to be had just in terms of uh, international perspective. In Canada, we maintain our leading market share position in intense comp uh, competition and believe that our strong capital position, operational excellence and pricing and marketing adjustments will work in concert to help ensure we reclaim share in the coming quarters. This effort will gain further support from fundamental appeal of our brands and product innovation, which as stores continue reopening, we will resonate uh, powerfully with consumers. And I wanna go over this because it's an extremely, extremely bullish 
uh, ER, if you didn't get excited, like a lot of people, you know, the MSO gang and maximalists, uh, they'll say that LPs are garbage and there's no, because they're just looking at sheer numbers, right? They're using traditional valuation metrics, uh, you know, to, to value, say, a grocery chain stock or st a company. They're using those same valuation metrics to value LPs and MSOs. Not that it's necessarily a bad or good thing. You just have to realize that a lot of what's going on in the background isn't factored into those sheer numbers. So U.S. federal um, full-blown legalization, not factored into the, to these numbers. Uh, competition that it's going to create for MSOs if LPs get to enter the states. And we already know that Tilray has a partnership with MedMen upon full-blown uh, federal legalization, right? We know acreage and canopy. So that's going to be huge, huge, huge competition. And a lot of these, a lot of those things in growth uh, segments and, and aspects aren't factored into the numbers. So it, you kind of just need to look past uh, the sheer numbers and realize that we're still very nascent and a lot of growth still yet to come both from a United States perspective, but also from a, an EU's perspective and, and global perspective. In the U.S., our Sweetwater Brewing uh, Breckenridge Distillery and Manitoba Harvest businesses are profitable, growing and emerging as nationwide iconic brands with loyal followings that will become home, that will be home to THC-based products upon U.S. federal legalization. So again, not factored into these numbers, uh, but again, you'll get those maximalists uh, in the U.S. who are saying, no, I own a lot of MSOs, I own more MSOs than I do LPs, but I have more dollars invested in LPs than I do MSOs, if that makes sense. And that is because they're listed on major exchanges, right? Like the NICE and the NASDAQ. As we know, uh, we had $2 billion traded uh, a couple weeks ago in Tilray in one day. And for comparison's sake, I checked TrueLeave and there was only $12 million traded. So not even close, right? That's why I have more dollars in LPs until we have uplisting of MSOs onto major capital markets. Mr. Simon continued, we are also continuing, uh, we can also continue sourcing and executing strategic and shareholder friendly, friendly transactions that provide value with notable upside. I like this part. Our most recent example is the proposed agreement to purchase Hexo senior convertible notes uh, which provides a path to meaningful future equity ownership of Hexo as it executes on its transformation. The proposed Hexo transaction is also expected to facilitate complementary com uh, commercial and product innovation, uh, drive produ production and operating efficiencies. Also, this is due to close in May, the transaction. Uh, they didn't mention that here, but uh, they mentioned that, uh, Hexo mentioned that on their previous uh, earnings. As the global economy reopens, we are confident that the global cannabis powerhouse at the heart of the Tilray brand's value proposition will deliver sustained and tangible shareholder value. Keep in mind, for every dollar, essentially, that Hexo goes up, if this deal does close, in fact, it actually does close in May, uh, for every dollar that Hexo goes up, essentially, um, it's locked in at 90 cents for Tilray. Uh, so when they convert that, uh, they can convert it at 90 cents, right, in it's going to be a while before they convert all of that. So they don't technically own Hexo yet, and the deal hasn't even closed. But essentially, the way that it works is for every dollar Hexo goes up after the deal closes, uh, Tilray is going to make about $200 million for every uh, dollar appreciation in stock price for, for Hexo. Also, they're going to cash in on that $20 million in interest uh, that they're going to accrue from that, uh, from that deal. Financial highlights, so net revenue increased 23% to $152 million during the third quarter to $124 million from the prior quarter. The increase was driven by 32% uh, growth in cannabis revenue to $55 million, 64% growth in beverage alcohol revenue of $20 million, and wellness revenue of $15 million. Gross profit increased 31% to $40 million from $30 million the prior year quarter. Gross margin increased 26% from 25% of the prior quarter. Uh, from the prior year quarter. Significant growth in international cannabis revenue was up over 4000 from the prior year. So we'll just take a look here. I'll show you uh, revenue from international MJ products. So 15.8 million uh, versus from the prior year quarter, 347,000. So 347,000, this is mentioned in thousands of dollars. So 347 and 15.82 uh, million uh, this, this quarter from last quarter. So that's a huge, huge increase. Uh, last quarter though, revenue from international sales was 13.7 million. Uh, so we're starting to see, and keep in mind, Germany isn't even fully legalized yet. Uh, so, and Malta as well, and then the rest of the EU. Oh my God, man. Like, if, you, if, if you guys aren't excited about the potential growth, you, you're sleeping. You're, you're literally living under a rock. Uh, or you're just using traditional evaluation metrics and looking at pure numbers and not actually factoring in that this industry is still very, 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 very early uh, and nascent and we have the best is really yet to come. Just imagine the potential if the U.S. federally uh, ends prohibition and federally legalizes. Oh, man, it's, it's going to be it's going to be epic. 
So moving on, I'm going to go through this a little bit quicker here. Manitoba Harvest announced an exclusive partnership with the Whole Foods Market. So again, uh, this is very, 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 very big, right? This is from uh, Hemp. Um, and who owns Whole Foods Market? Amazon. Who's backing federal cannabis reform? Apple secretly joined Amazon in advancing commercial MJ reform. Guys, the this is super bullish. And again, if you're not excited yet, um, you better check your pulse because <laughs> you must, you, you, there's probably something bigger going on. So partnership with Whole Foods Market launching the brands Hemp plus Matcha and Super Greens powders exclusively at Whole Foods across North America. Also potentially opens a way for potential of uh, on Amazon. I think, I'm not sure it's on Amazon. I think it's in Costco as well. Um, we'll have to check that. Uh, don't quote me on that, but uh, opens the way for Amazon if not already. I didn't check that, but that's something that we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for. The Brewers Association announced that Sweetwater Brewing Co. is now the 10th largest craft beer brewer in the U.S. Tilray Brands announced the launch of Soleil Bites, the first uh, THC edible. So I did a video on that yesterday. They launched the first edible in Quebec. And uh, also shout out to a uh, Pow Group member for correct it, uh, finding the answer to my question. Um, I didn't realize why it was. It said 2.5 and 5 milligrams on the SQDC. And then in the, in the actual press release, it said... Uh, five and ten that's because they were talking about each unit so there's two units in a package so in one package you get five uh five milligrams of thc and 10 milligrams of cbd so thanks for uh you know who you are uh for pointing that out uh moving on here so tilray brands um so yeah launched that in quebec second largest market in canada again these numbers the you know, the maximalists uh, are looking at uh, the, the MSO gang maximalists. They're not looking at the fact that Quebec didn't even have edibles yet. There's still not even vapes yet. Guys, you're sleeping if you don't understand the potential here. Also, drinks going from 5 to 48 in Canada. Uh, eventually, there, we have a 10 milligram cap on the, on the edibles as well. Also, SQDC confirmed that multiple edibles are going to be coming in the coming months. And they're also going to be like locked away back in back because <laughs> um, they, they don't want it to like resemble candy and be attractive to children and, and, and young people. Uh, pretty silly if you ask me. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about that. I mean, it's not like it's like cigarettes or something, right? Uh, but anyway, moving on, I digress. All those things, like the second largest Quebec market, like it, it, there's so much not factored into these numbers, folks. Uh, so Soleil Tilray's brand's best-selling Canadian wellness brand announced the launch of Renew Moonlight, a CBN vape pen for nighttime use. That's crazy. That's, um, that's again, super bullish. Uh, March 17th, Tilray Medical launched its first medical cannabis oil products in Malta. I did a video on that. On March 8th, 2022, Good Supply Tilray brand's best-selling Canadian cannabis brand announced the first launch of Hash Bats. <laughs> Great, uh, like bats like joints um it's new fastest growing infused pre-rolls and we know hexo is working on the redican plus which is going to be essentially uh, infused pre-rolls as well so look for that to come in the next coming months uh, on march 3rd tilray brands announced proposed strategic alliance again mentioning hexo corp to bring together canada canada's top two mj market share leaders to strengthen strengthen operational efficiencies and product innovation to benefit consumers shareholders and the cannabis industry on march 2nd manitoba harvest announced its new lineup of superfood products on march 22nd sweetwater brewing company launched across Oregon, Washington, and marking the brand's expansion into their 39th and 40th states. Huge. Tilray Medical announced its first shipment into the medical cannabis products to Malta on February 10th. Breckenridge Distillery launched its second sold-out series of super sexy motor oil, a limited edition bourbon aged in beer barrels for over a year. And again, we know that they're likely going to be coming out with bourbon-infused uh, cannabis. So... <laughs> Again, all of this stuff not factored into today's numbers that a lot of uh, maximalists are overlooking. Sweetwater Brewing Company announced its West Coast expansion into California, a partnership with the largest beer distributor in the U.S. Keep in mind, ca uh, Canada is the size of California. On February 8th, Tilray Brands launched Tilray Medical, a new comprehensive global division focused on international medical cannabis advocacy and a portfolio of EU GMP certified medical brands and products. That just means that they can legally sell them across the EU. On January 25th, Tilray Brands an uh, announced expanded medical cannabis product offering in Australia to launch a new online medical cannabis education platform of healthcare professionals in Australia and New Zealand. January 20th, Manitoba Har Harvest introduced new hemp recipes compatible with vegan, keto, and different options there as well. Going to run through this a little quick, uh, quicker now. Tilray announced new parent name Tilray Brands on January 10th. December 21st, Sweetwater Brewing Company acquired uh, award-winning craft beer brands Alpine Beer and Green Flash Brewing. I didn't know that. Another bullish... Uh, topic as well. Uh, Tilray acquired Breckenridge Distillery, strengthening its strategic uh, position in the U.S. And on, uh, that was on the 8th. And December 2nd, Manitoba Harvest introduced hemp hearts and health snacks for the holidays. 
Uh, so growth highlight potential key markets. Number one market share leading position in Germany and poised to accelerate strategic growth iniv- uh, initiatives upon adult use legalization, strategic expansion across the EU. Number one leading cannabis market share in Canada, a leading e- uh, US CPG platform with operational strength, leadership, expertise, and op- uh, optionality to be immediately leveraged for cannabis products upon federal US legalization, right? They have that uh, MedMen senior secure, uh, senior secure convertible notes in MedMen. So you can see their strategy, right? They want to be a global powerhouse. They had the conference call. Again, if you joined in on that, let me know. I wasn't able to make that. I'd love to hear from you uh, if you have any notable analyst questions or answers that they had from that Q&A. Um, so again, something to consider here is their their MJ revenue is lower than their distribution revenue and their alcohol, their beverage and wellness revenue. Uh, the majority of the revenue isn't even coming from MJ, right? So again, uh, this is a lot of people just think that they're an MJ company, right? And they're garbage. No, they Alpine Beer, they have Sweetwater Brewing Co., uh, all those other brands, uh, Manitoba Harvest, uh, people aren't understanding the bigger picture. And uh, that's fine. They don't need to because this train is going with or without them. Smash the like if you're bullish. Smash it, ravish it, just destroy that freaking thing because I am bullish as ever. Uh, Like I said, guys, this month's going to be huge. I think the next couple of months are going to be huge. Absolutely massive for, uh, for MJ. And like I said, Yesterday, I made a post to uh, private chat community members. I said, Bitcoin was starting weekly consolidation, brace for some volatility and, and some downside. And usually Bitcoin's been leading the market, sure enough. I said, watch for SPY to follow suit. Today, SPY followed suit. And that came after the news, like I said, Dow falls as Fed gives plan to shrink balance sheet and considers bigger rate hikes, right? Uh, so again, the market has been led by Bitcoin and then Usually we see Tesla move because Tesla has billions of dollars of of Bitcoin on its balance sheet. And then because of SPY having such a huge weighting of of Tesla, uh, then SPY follows, right? Uh, So that's how I knew to be expecting potential weakness today in the broader market. And that's exactly what happened. I mentioned in my videos from yesterday, I said, if Tilray beats and has a a positive reaction, uh, we were up, like I said, from yesterday's close, uh, we were up about... 15%, 15%, a little over 15%, but because of the headwinds in the broader market, because of weekly consolidation that we knew was imminent and inevitable, uh, that resulted in the gains being given back. So if you're wondering why Tilray was up and then down, it's because of the broader market and crypto, everything everything very, very similar at the moment, just correlating to that broader market, uh, but still up about 3.13% on the day, having held EMA 12 there on the daily and daily bounce underway. Uh, so more than likely going to be a daily inside bar in the broader market and on Tilray tomorrow, but we held EMA 12 there, but it's all about support at 691 USD. If we lose 691, then we look down at the golden pocket, uh, FIB 0.618 FIB extension, uh, FIB rotation, uh, sorry, and that's down at 642. So all about 691. If we lose that, we're looking down at 642. Resistance is the high of today at 815. After 815, we're looking at the high of the bounce there at 908. The great thing about this though is SPY is getting its weekly consolidation out of the way and so is crypto. So if we see, uh, and we're in weekly uptrends, right? On uh, on, on crypto and the, the S&P 500, with the low, high, higher, low and higher high. So we're just looking for a weekly higher low. If we see the broader market uh, set its higher low and continue up higher in past its local resistance, that's going to be good for MJ. And this is setting up the uh, the opportunity here for Tilray as well. We lost the low of last week, meaning weekly consolidation is underway. We're pulling back on the weekly and now we're set up for a weekly trend change. So if we hold this low here, we get a ton of room from support there at 478. So if we hold this low, come down, form a higher low and then break resistance there at 908, that's going to confirm a weekly uptrend. And as we know, bulls are still in prove it mode, bears are in full control. We need to confirm weekly uptrends before we get confident in a bottom being set. Um, and, and on the monthly time frame, monthly bounces underway, but we're going to be watching for monthly uptrends. We need monthly uptrends to confirm that the bear market is absolutely in and that we could see a new bull market over the next six to 12 months. Uh, keep in mind, we want to see a, a weekly candle close over the 10-week moving average there at 647 USD. Still above that, though, and extremely bullish. MACD and, and Stochastic had a extremely bullish cross as well. And then in terms of resistance after $9, we've got 10 psychological. We've got a lower high here at 1395, but we also have the weekly moving averages there around 1123 and 1162. So I expect uh, we could potentially break through, uh, let's say the spot, SPY in the broader market sees a, a, a stronger day tomorrow, uh, and we go up back towards resistance and a green day, I think that we could see Tilray and the cannabis sector have uh, a favorable uh, move to the upside as well. So if you're wondering where 
we're, where the next resistance is. We're watching, like I said, that, that high at 908 USD and then watch 10 psychological and then right around the mid $11 area is going to be very, very strong resistance. We also have the 200 day moving average, which we have yet to test since we lost it as support. And we're trying to form some support now on the 100 day moving average. And you can see the 50 day starting to curl. We're starting to head back up to towards the 200, which is bullish. Um, but like I said, the 200 day moving average, which we've yet to test since we lost it as support is going to be strong resistance in my opinion there at 1024. So 10 psychological, uh, I think is going to be a, a very, very strong area of resistance to get over. And again, it's really going to uh, depend on the broader market. The broader market and the S&P 500 are really going to dictate what happens to MJ over the next few weeks. And again, uh, I think we're going to see a sell in May and go away. We're going to start to see the broader market top and crypto top into May and into the end of May. And then we're going to start to see, uh, I think we're going to see MJ really enter its bull cycle uh, after that. So in conclusion, we're watching the weekly time frame. So we need weekly uptrends to be confirmed. This earnings was absolutely monstrous and bullish. There's so many bullish uh, aspects to that uh, earnings report. I can't wait to see uh, what Hexo comes out with as well in June. I think it's going to be many better days ahead. Let me know in the comments what you thought of these earnings. Are you bullish? Are you bearish? Again, if you heard anything on that uh, on that call, on Tilray's earnings report call, uh, have any notable questions or answers, please let me know in the comments below. I would appreciate it. And if you could smash the like and subscribe to the channel on your way out. And we shall see you guys again on the next video. Thanks again for joining us on The Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rob with Power Group. Always a pleasure. And uh, greener days ahead. No pun intended. Take care, guys.